The modern history of Turkey is overshadowed by war for independence, authoritarianism, ethnic tensions, rapid modernization, internal conflicts and economic failures. But in the last decade, no country has transformed itself more than Turkey. The country has established a dynamic economy with many booming sectors. Inflation and public debt is at manageable levels, Turkish entrepreneurs are thriving throughout the region, and in fact, Turkey ranks among the top manufacturers in Europe. The country has a vibrant civil society and it has become more open and accessible for political reforms. So in a time when Turkey is actually making progress, why are so many Turks discontent with the government and demonstrating against the ruling party? The demonstrations in Istanbul started out small and peaceful. But this all changed when the local security forces used excessive force like tear gas and water cannons to disperse the people. And then government officials showed an indifferent attitude towards the situation. Even the Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan made several controversial statements. He actually further provoked the situation instead of reaching out. So all of this had an opposite effect and contributed to the escalation and expansion of the demonstrations. And there is an underlying reason why so many people are upset with the government. For example, the demolition of historic buildings and neighborhoods in Istanbul and the neglection of architecture draws in a lot of angry protesters, people who are concerned with the house and living quality. Another example is the proposed bridge that would have some 300,000 trees removed and this draws in upset environmentalists. And to make matters even more controversial is that the bridge is to be named after Yavuz Sultan Salim. Now Salim was known for his fierce persecution of Elavis. And this adds fuel to the fire, especially if you consider the role Turkey plays in the Syrian civil war. And just to make matters worse, the Prime Minister passed a legislation that restricts the consumption and sale of alcohol in the country. Now to be fair, Erdogan's reforms and achievements are nothing short of groundbreaking. But for all of his accomplishments, there are an equal number of developments that overshadow the achievements. And this has left a lot of people feeling anxious about the future of the country. All of these new projects and developments have generated a mass of angry responses from the public. Mainly because the government has completely ignored the public opinion. It is this kind of unilateral decision making that has unified all the various opposition groups in Turkey against the ruling party. So the protests do not represent a single ideology or a single faction. Every citizen has a different reason for protesting. And the fact that it spreads so rapidly exposes that there are many dormant issues in the country. But it doesn't mean that Turkey is facing a revolution or an Arab Spring-like uprising. Erdogan and his party still have substantial support throughout the country. It does, however, show that even though Erdogan represents the majority, he simply cannot neglect the opinion of the minority. And given the media coverage that these protests have received, it will play a fundamental role in the upcoming elections. This has seriously hurt the image of the ruling party. And if the demonstrators and the opposition parties form an umbrella movement against their government, this could tip the scale during the elections. This was a Caspian report by Mishirwan. Thank you for watching and Sagol.